In this video, let's talk about where the structure of intellect came from. We have to go back in history, back to World War II, which was happening in the late 1930s and the early to mid 1940s. During this time, the U.S. Army Air Corps needed more pilots. They advertised to men wanting them to join, and then after new potential recruits came, they put them through an application process. And basically, they tried to find out if the men who wanted to join would be good pilots or not. And originally, the U.S. Army Air Corps had their entire application process. And it had different types of tests and things like that to find out how qualified the men would be as pilots. But the thing was that it takes a long time to go from an application process to actually flying a plane. And during the training process, there was a 35% dropout rate, which means that out of 100 men, 35 of them never got into the sky and never flew a plane. You can imagine that the government probably wasn't very happy about this. They felt like they were wasting money and time. And so they wanted to fix this problem so that they could uh, reduce the dropout rate and have more men as pilots. So they started wondering what they could do about it. And they looked at their application process. The health screening from the doctors didn't have a problem with it. And the other thing about physical endurance abilities was also good. And the stress testing that they did seemed to be fine. They were concerned that the intelligence application, that part, was the problem. And so basically, if they wanted to save money, improve their quality, and reduce the 35% dropout rate, then they needed better tests to accept the right pilots. So they decided to change the intelligence test, and they needed somebody to do that. Who could create a better test? Well... Someone knew someone who knew something who recommended J.P. Guilford. And this guy right here was brought into the U.S. Army Air Corps to redesign the intelligence testing for the application to become a pilot. Now, I'll save you from a lot of the details, but basically, J.P. Guilford did a whole bunch of experiments and research and spent a lot of time understanding the existing test. He looked at the pilots and things like that, and after a lot of time, he created a new test that could be used with the potential pilots. And the interesting thing was that when they brought it in, things started to change. Now remember, the old dropout rate was 35%. When they introduced Guilford's new test, the dropout rate became less than 10%. This is a pretty significant change. People were very excited about this because it meant that they were saving money. Um, you know, they weren't losing people to stress or difficulty or things like that. And they could ultimately have more higher quality pilots. The government was really excited about that. And after the war finished, the U.S. Department of Defense decided that they wanted to put part of their budget towards... J.P. Guilford's ongoing research and his ongoing work. Because basically they said, we like what you're doing, Guilford, and we want you to keep researching. So they sent him to Southern California. He moved to the University of Southern California. And down there, it was the home of Guilford's research from 1945 to 1965. It was called the Aptitudes Project. At the University of Southern California, Guilford refined his theory. He eventually called it the structure of intellect. It's usually represented by this cube, and it has a lot of columns and rows on each side. We're going to talk about this in a later video and what these things mean. Guilford argued that there are 150 separate intellectual abilities or different factors. Because as you can see here, we have five... And then down is six. And then over is another five. 
So basically, he believed that there were 150 separate intellectual abilities. We'll talk about that later. But just for now, remember that the cube represents all of those different combinations of intelligence and intellectual abilities. Now, J.P. Guilford had a following of people. Lots of PhD students wanted to come and learn from him, and he actually had a following of those PhD students. This included a husband-wife duo, Robert and Mary Meeker. There was an important difference between J.P. Guilford's original theory and mentality about the structure of intellect and Mary Meeker. Guilford's mentality was that if you don't have the intellectual abilities, you're not right for the job. This was the reason why he was so successful in reducing the dropout rate. Basically, pilots applied to the U.S. Army Air Corps and their applications were being rejected because things were more strict and they were looking for the right kinds of people. Now, this is great for the employer or for the association that's in charge, but it isn't great for the student or for the person who is applying and wants the job. What about somebody who wants to become a pilot or wants to do a certain job and they're being rejected because they don't have the intellectual abilities yet that make it easy for them to do it? Mary Meeker's mentality was different. She believed if you don't have the intellectual abilities, let's develop them so that you become right for the job. Now, this is obviously a really different kind of approach because what Mary Meeker believed was that a person's intellectual ability could rise over time. It could actually get better, stronger and more developed as time passed. So maybe a person begins down in the low range where they're rejected from a job or possibly failing a test because certain types of intellectual abilities are so difficult for them. However, if they improve those things and get better at them, then they move into the higher green zone where they're accepted for a job or they're passing a test. This is a really exciting possibility that has lots of implications. And so Mary Meeker started doing a lot of research. She worked closely with teachers in schools and did research studies from 1962 to 1974. Actually, in 1965, SOI Systems was founded by her and her husband. And they created an educational consultancy that built on J.P. Guilford's work. It simplified it in certain ways and expanded it in others. One of the things that they created was the SOI assessment. You may recognize this because you took this test earlier. And in addition to this diagnostic test, there are also workbooks and other kinds of practice activities that help to build specific intellectual abilities. Today, the SOI test is used in countries around the world and there are certified practitioners and educational consultants in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Germany, India, Japan, and Singapore. Who can use SOI? Basically, everybody who's old enough to think and communicate. So that includes children who are in elementary, middle school, high school, university age students who are going to college or doing master's programs, adults, professionals, and PhD applicants. Basically, anybody who wants increased brain performance. And that's really important. If you're studying or learning something, or even if you're working in your job, having high levels of brain performance is a really important thing. So the structure of intellect and that cube that we looked at before is a good way to remember that there are a lot of specific intellectual abilities. J.P. Guilford argued that there were 150. Mary Meeker later reduced that to about 90, but still, (laughs) you know, it's important to recognize how many different types of brain functions there are because sometimes when we take tests and when we try to learn things, it gets oversimplified, and that gets confusing. 
So if you're interested in increased brain performance, then continuing with SOI is really a unique way to identify the specific problems that you're having so that you know what they are, identify them, and then have a way to overcome them. In the next video, we'll talk about what kinds of intellectual abilities exist.